this is a uh, much much different uh, um, you know off season as you get you look at the next season with all the, the new kickoff rules and such. Yeah, the, the, the kickoff kickoff return rule is obviously a big uh, point of emphasis for our special teams unit right now. Just trying to figure out the rules, um, the details of the play, and how it's going to work. And um, definitely a big big change in the play. And so um, you can take it two ways. You you can be uh, you know play the fact of the unknown where you're a little scared, or you can be excited about it. And and I think the guys have uh, you know taken the excited approach, and, and we're fired up to to cover kicks. And on the flip side, return return kicks. With it almost being absolute that you want to get a return, like, do you change things as far as like trying to develop different ways to plays, etc. Strategically. Yeah, I, I I don't know if it's going to be guaranteed to return. I mean, there, there's still the touchback factor. Um, you know, on a on a regular touchback where the ball uh, lands in the end zone and it's down, this ball is going to spot it at the 30. If the ball skips in the end zone, it's going to be spotted at the 20 with, when, when you down it. So, you know, I, I think the touchback phase will still play a big factor. But as far as returns, there's going to be more returns. Um, the play is going to look a lot different than it did last year. The play is going to look a lot different. Um, you know, we're, that, we're, we're trying to figure that out right now, what specifically it's going to look like, the timing. Um, as far as skill set, who's going to be out there on the kickoff um, side of things, and then on a kickoff return, what type of returners we're going to have. You know, so we're playing with that right now, trying to um, you know, figure out what, what that's going to look like. What kind of led you here to be here with Brian? What are maybe some other things you want to establish as, as special teams coordinator? No doubt. I'm sure it's like you know, most coordinators say, is we're, we're trying to build a foundation, um, just the way we do things, um, you know, just being super detailed with our assignment, everyone execute, executing um, you know, their assignment. Uh, on point and so uh, and on top of that just the way we f the way we play the way we finish um, our mindset um, creating that culture uh, that winning culture and, and then everyone just taking pride in, in, in their their role whatever it is what's your baseline expectation of a punt return a punt return or the return the sp specific position yeah. my expectations we take care of the ball um, we get the ball back to our offense, let them score. Um, obviously, it's the first play of offense. If we can score, uh, that'd be great. But we're, we're, we're trying to control field position. Main thing is take care of the ball. How much uh, different are the new rules for the kicker, too? A, lot, a little bit more pressure on him now instead of just being able to boot the ball, uh, you know, so many of them have over the years? Um, I, I, it seems to me like the kickers kind of like this. It's, hang time has completely got wiped out. We're not worried about the hang time. Because um, the kickoff or kickoff return team cannot leave till the ball lands inside the landing zone, hits the ground, or touches a player. So hang time is irrelevant. Um, so they kind of like that aspect of it, where they don't have to pop it um, up super high. But uh, placement is going to be a big factor, um, and then depth of the kick is going to be a big, a big deal. You brought up playing around with it, experimenting with it. I'm just curious, how? Like, what are you guys studying to figure this out? When it's so new? I know there's some other leagues that have tried mm -hmm. it, but what are you kind of looking at to come to these conclusions? Yeah, I, uh, XFL did it last year, so I, I can almost guarantee that every coach has looked at the XFL um, specifically. You know what what works, uh, the timing of the play. Um, you know, on the flip side, it's kind of interesting that the UFL, XFL, the, the, when they combined, they 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 got rid of that play. So there's only one year of. Of, a, uh, of that play actually happened. So, you know, we're looking at that play. A lot of, a lot of teams looking at that, just trying to, you know, create some ideas, the timing. Um, you know, more so, too, it's, it's the uh, – their, their, their kickoff team started from the 35. We're, we're back at the 40. So there's going to be more space. Um, so we're trying to figure out the timing and all that right now. What are you kind of finding as the, as the differences in the skill sets? Maybe you touched on it earlier. You might be looking for different kinds of players. What are the different skill sets now in, in coverage and return? Yeah, uh, you know, off season's interesting. Obviously, there's no shoulder pads. You know, there's no hitting going on. So there's, you know, we're we're, we're trying to see what, what kind of guys can move in space, run around blocks. We don't want anybody getting engaged in in, in the blocker, seeing who can, you know, avoid, uh, you know, front door, back door, around the block, and then bend to get to the play. So big emphasis is is trying to find guys who can move in space. Now, when we get to training camp, it's gonna it's gonna it's it's a different ball game once you get pads on. Right, you get the physical um, physicality back in there and, and see who can get off blocks and who can block, who can s sustain a block. So, what are your thoughts been on Stonehouse from afar? And what's the process like, kind of getting him, you know, going where he's peaking at the right time? Yeah, from afar, uh, you know, just looking back, he, he, the kid's a weapon. Um, he, he's he's talented as heck. Uh, you know, last year was so for unfortunate to see him get injured. You know, when I first got here, he was one of the first guys I met, and he just brings so much energy. Um, he's a competitor. 
that's one thing about you know the, the guys that we have not just him but they're all competitors they all want to do um you know good things and 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 he's he's one of them and I uh, love the energy he brings. The, I know the training staff will probably say the same thing. He approaches every day like it's a game day. Um, we've been fortunate to have him out on the field, um, you know, with us during practice, and uh, love, love the energy, um, love, 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 you know, his talent. And so, hopefully, we can get him back. How close would you say he is to being able to start kicking again? Uh, I, 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 I'm not going to speculate with how close he is. Um, kind of above, above my pay grade, but hopefully, we can get him back as soon as possible. Um, Brian mentioned Traylon Burks specifically yesterday as, as maybe the kind of guy who might take a look at in a kick return situation because of his speed and strength. Is that, is that a guy you that comes to mind for, for you as well? Well, let me just tell you something. That kid is an um, ultimate pro. The way he's handled, uh, you know, everything from, from day one, you know, he – he wants to be on the field. Any way we can get him on the field, we're going to find a way to get him on the field. He's he's explosive. Um, he can run. He's physical. He's got he's got all the attributes to to be a good football player. And at the end of the day, um, we're going to have offense, defense, special teams. We're going to have the best eleven out there that are going to help us win. You know, things are going for you to the first part of OTAs and on the mini camp. You know, I think for the first part of OTAs, it's been really good. We feel like we've gotten most of the system in. You know, so now we've really coached it for a second or a third time. So we've been able to see kind of the growth from just like the learning the plays to actually kind of taking the techniques, applying to the plays and that kind of deal. So I feel like the guys are getting more comfortable in the offense and kind of everything we're asking them to do. So it's been uh, it's been good progress so far. The, well, the use of uh, your, your two running backs, how excited are you to have those guys and actually see them on the field and see how you can work? You know, they've both been as advertised, to say the least. And, you know, we've kind of in each special teams period and kind of they're not a, really involved in special teams very much. So it's time for us with, as the quarterbacks kind of really to keep developing them in the passing game and getting all kinds of different ball handling. And, you know, we're under such time constraints in OTAs that that time's been really valuable for us to kind of take them over there and just develop their skill sets in all facets of the game. So, you know, we just still feel that they're both interchangeable and they both can be real big assets in the passing game and in the running game. So I think it's been it's been fun for both of them. Are you at a point yet where you go back and you look at other teams or schemes that have used backs at the same time, like in that similar skill set, or are you still just kind of feeling things up? A little bit. I'd say we've kind of in the last – three or four days really felt like the whole offense just kind of conceptually was in. And so now kind of starting really yesterday and then through next week, we'll kind of put in some of those wrinkles and kind of those kind of things. We've really kept it. We've only had one team period a day or maybe one team period in a walkthrough. So to kind of get into all that stuff, we've really wanted to get the basics down. And then we've started installing some of those things, but we haven't repped them in a group setting as much. So. Okay. How do you envision being able to use Josh, particularly the height, to, to an advantage when he gives you so much more than you get out of the three wide vertically? You know, Josh has uh, had a great offseason, start with that, but he does have that kind of skill set. But he's not just, you know, he's got a, how do you say it? He's got really good ball skills for a big guy as well. So that kind of target, especially in the red zone, especially kind of on third downs and things like that where he can – He's more of a matchup, I think, than he was probably given credit for. So for us, we'd really love to get him in some of those one-on-one -on -one situations, especially against a backer. You know, he's got so much height, and he's got really good ball skills. So that'd be something that we definitely are trying to add to his repertoire. Along those lines, can he use his size to, like, the way Antonio Gates did with the, uh, the basketball background to kind of box people out in one-on-one -on -one situations like that? You know, I think Josh would very much like to be compared to Antonio Gates. So, you know, I, you know, I think that's a very, uh, that's an aggressive, uh, that'd be, that'd be uh, you know, it'd be great. You know, I think there's, there, there's certainly something to develop, there's something to work on there. Uh, you know, he's, from that point of just a true size matchup, absolutely, you know, and then, you know, the Antonio Gates part, I'll let, when you guys talk to him, you guys can ask him about his basketball skills and ball skills in that regard. But yeah, he would definitely has, he definitely has more matchup capabilities. And I think, you know, he's been healthy here this whole, you know, kind of this whole spring. And so you've really seen the route running, the different 
change of direction and kind of that body control for him take a leap so far in the first couple of weeks? All the tight ends, would you prefer if one guy emerged as a every down type player or do you kind of want to deploy the guys you have situationally more often? You know, I think it's important for us right now to have as much depth as possible. So we want as many guys that can do as many jobs and not kind of be pigeonholed of Josh is this guy, Chig is this guy, you know, Nick Vanette, whoever, Thomas, all the guys are just, these are their roles. So in the off season, it's been more, let's see how much all of them can do. And I, at some point, I think you'd love to have, I think everybody would love to have, you know, Travis Kelsey and say that this is our guy and those kind of things. But I think it's also important for us with the depth piece to keep building up. And they're all young players. So I don't think we really want to limit right now what any of them can do in that, in that regard. How are the wide receivers meshing so far? And I guess, is it, a, is it a good challenge to have three guys who are used to getting a lot of, of targets? Uh, yeah, every every receiver is the same. You know, I don't think every receiver's ever said they've had too many targets. Uh, but it's been, you know, I think it's we were kind of talking about them as a group the other day. They, as a group, none of them have any real deficiency. You know what I mean? Like, so there's not something you see and say this guy can't do this, they can't do that. But like, each one of them has kind of an elite trait which you really want to maximize, you know, Calvin's got the great speed and, you know, burst off the ball and, you know, vertical change of direction, you know, Tyler's so smooth in and out of his cuts and kind of has a great understanding in the slot and kind of how to work coverages and in the system. And then DeAndre has got such, you know, he's probably got the strongest hands of anybody in the league. So it's great to have guys that are all good at everything, but they also have one thing you're like, okay, this is a, advantage for us so moving them around and kind of you know none of them are uh, none of them are young so we're not gonna try to you know blow them out out here and try to you know do too much but they've been able to show each one of their skill sets and kind of we have some each day a little bit targeted place for each guy to, as we get as we've been going what is stood out to you about how Bill has come up come along this offseason and how he's maybe responded to like the, the tweaks in, in his base for you know, I think there's a part of the, with his base, he's really as coachable of a quarterback, I think, as you could find. He takes all the instruction. He doesn't really fight you on anything. He's got ideas and, hey, this is why I'm doing this. And he's got a really unique, I'm not sure I've ever been around a guy who's so in touch with all of his mechanical things. He's very focused on it and he has a really big understanding of it all. So he's got a reason for why he's done it, but then if we show him stuff on film or, Hey, this is why this is why he takes it to heart like that. And you can see the intention out there of every time then he gets on the next day. It's been really impressive from that standpoint of, okay, they said this, let's do this. Let's like make this my focus of the day. And he's done that every day without, without fail. So it's been really cool from that standpoint, but he's, he's very willing, I would say. A lot of moving pieces on the other line. What's, your, what's your level of confidence in that group and particularly at, uh, at right tackle? You know, I think there's, it's awesome to say you have confidence when we don't have pads on. So, you know, it's been, uh, everybody's going to have everybody blocked or that kind of deal. Uh, but they're doing a great job. And you watch this group, you know, I know you guys have been out there a handful of days. And the the work in individual, let alone the team periods, it's like, that's a impressive, to say the least. I would answer your question with two different things. I think the Coach Callahan... See, Coach Gallian Sr., the older one, I, I'm not sure how we all refer to differentiate him. I got to work on that. Uh, Bill has done a great job mixing and matching all the different spots because, you know, last year in Cleveland, they played five tackles, you know, and I think you look at the season and you look at the teams with the most depth win and the teams that can withstand injuries. If one guy goes out, we don't want to have to kind of shut down the whole ship, you know what I mean, and say, all right, now we can't run these plays. So I think we're doing a really nice job of building the whole group and then, you know, right tackle. So we've had a handful of guys all working there and they've all done a really nice job. You know, OJ has done a good job. Nick's done a really nice job. Jalen Duncan has uh, you know, done some really nice things. So all those guys have really filled in admirably or performed admirably at this point in non-padded stuff. Well, mechanics, are you seeing uh, results as well from, from some of that work? Are you seeing like more consistency? Ab absolutely, absolutely. We think, you know, he's just been more consistently accurate, right? So, you know, when you play with the base and you got your kind of feet and, you know, we talk about being like rooted in the ground and then really there's 
just less variation how the throws come out. You know, when you're off kind of platform and off kilter like that, sometimes your arm angles get all off and he sails and it'll drop, you know. And it's been not just with Will. We've been working on that with all three quarterbacks. So. D-Hop, where have you seen maybe some leadership emerging on offense? Oh, boy, that's a, you know, uh, Calvin has certainly been a guy who's, you know, been more vocal in the meetings and kind of taking a leadership role. You know, uh, uh, Tyler Boyd's done a really nice job with the young receivers kind of taking him and, you know, we only have so much meeting time. Hey, this is the system. This is this. This was this. This is something that worked for me when I was in since he learning this or this, how I ran this route. So those two receivers have done a great job. You know, Lloyd kind of is a... I wouldn't say unspoken leader, but he's got kind of that really quiet, um, steadying presence for the group. And then I think the two running backs are kind of our energy starters from that right. So I think everybody's kind of feeling themselves out of what the leadership role is. And But they've we've had a handful of guys step up in their own ways. Is there, is there one area where you've seen JC make strides already or maybe a couple of years? And as far as leadership goes, he's you see him talking out there as a, as a rookie. Is that, is that, have you got noticed that yourself? Well, JC has maybe the best energy of any person on this team. I mean, he is like a, he's out here all day. You know, there was a, here's a side story about JC. The day he signed his contract or something, we were sitting in our office. I was having a sandwich and we, it's about to have a thunderstorm out here. And we look outside and ran, I walked down the hallway and it's just JC out here by himself, you know, it, 4.30 in the afternoon, hitting a sled. And, you know, so Rand and I walked out there. We're like, hey, you know, first of all, you can't be working on the field. You got to go. And there's about to be a thunderstorm. And, you know, he's just like, oh, this is what I want to do. And so his energy is infectious from that standpoint. But I would say he's done a really nice job with his footwork. You know, his, you know, playing left tackle in the NFL, it's a foot speed position, you know, and there's, you're going up against the best athlete on defense. So he's done a really nice job, I think, improving that and just kind of playing under control, you know, he's so big and he's so strong and he doesn't need to do a million different things to, to move people and to get himself in the right body position. Now that you've got Traylon on the field and you've seen him, but what are some things that he's done well and then what are some areas for him? He has uh, exceeded expectations so far, you know, and um, I know, you know, being a first round pick, he's kind of like a, hot button issue a little bit with the media here. It seems like there's a lot of trailing questions. He has been unbelievable. His work ethic every day has been awesome. He's, you know, vertical speed, his size, his strength has showed up nonstop every day. And so he's made some plays down the field. You know, we'd like to see him. He had one yesterday down the sideline. We'd like to see him reel in. And so that'd be one of those things of, you know, hey, when the big plays are there, you got to make them. But he's done excellent for us, and he's really been – versatile be able to play inside and outside so he's actually been rotating it at all three spots and you know a lot of times he's been running with the ones because guys aren't there and you know some you know it's the off season so it's voluntary so he's been he's been doing a really nice job kind of plug and play in that standpoint i mean, categorize the effort that you've seen i would say it's been excellent he's been he's been awesome and attitude and effort for him would be uh, a plus from us nick you have um obviously you and the callahan family mm -hmm. go way back What's it been like now that you actually work with uh, Brian and uh, as Carthen calls a big coach? Yeah. So I've you know uh, big coach gave me uh, my first job in 2007, and he tried to murder me, he tried to kill me. I was uh, 23 or 24, and I had no idea what I was doing. I was uh, underwater from a work standpoint because I've never seen anybody. I didn't know people could work like he works, and then to be like his assistant producing the work was fairly overwhelming. Uh, now, you know, 20 or 15 years later, I think I've uh, got a little bit better of a handle on it. And then, you know, Brian and I were together in 18 in Oakland. So we'd, we'd worked together before, but it's, it's really cool to see, uh, you know, especially for me with Brian, you know, like when he's in front of the team and to see somebody I knew personally before this, and now seeing the role he's in now and seeing how he commands the team, his presence, he knows exactly what he wants to say when he wants to say it, and he does a really nice job. So I think for me, that's just been cool as a friend or as a long time, somebody's known for a long time to see somebody grow into that role. And how's it developed to y'all's relationship as y'all continue to? You know, I think, uh, I think our relationship's probably the same. You know, we, uh, you know, it's a very honest and open communication and, you know, everything is just kind of 
open door policy and it's uh we all both say to whatever needs to be said positive or negative you know we're, he's not afraid to criticize me and i'm not afraid to you know you can only criticize up the chain so much so you know i'll give my uh two cents that way but it's been really fun in developing a young quarterback like will how pivotal is gro major growth and a major step forward in the second year of the, of the process yeah i think there's some point the second year is uh you know, contractually, it's always great for, you know, that's a kind of a big picture for us. You know, we're really looking at it. It's just we've been with him a couple months. We everything we've seen from a growth standpoint from day one to today has been awesome. And um, so but yeah, we everybody wants to see growth. I think either in this league, you're either growing or you're either getting better or you're not. And it's they're going to find somebody to replace you that way. But he's been doing great. So we have no no thoughts, really. The smoothest you think in terms of, of guys learning the offense, and, and which one you found to be the most challenging for guys? You know, we've done a decent amount of stuff at the line of scrimmage, so I think that's always challenging. Of, you know, you get a play in the huddle, we get there, and we give the quarterback some ability to check, or you know, give the line to you know uh, Lloyd and Will make a different call, and I think those things always in the heat of the moment communication is always the toughest, right? You're sitting there, you know, we've got the music going, our defense. You know, our defense is just as variable as everybody. You know, they, Denard's brought this scheme where he's got people blitzing from everywhere and lining up all over the place. So we're getting a lot of – so that communication, I think, has been the best part but also the most challenging part because it's – all we talk about in our meetings is communication. The number one thing is, you know, quarterback to receiver, coach to player, player to player. That's every – almost every clip we talk about, hey, what are we talking about here? What's the call? What's this? How would you adjust it? What would you see? How would you let them know you saw it? So that part of – it's probably a little cumbersome of that, but we're that's been the good and the bad, so I'd say it'd be both. You touched on Cal a little bit earlier. What's it like being back with him again now, and how much you think he's driven to kind of show, hey, I'm worth that contract and still, still got it? You know, I, I think Calvin was always driven, I would say, and then last year when I got with him in Jacksonville, I think there was some coming off the suspension, that drive, and – uh, want to show everybody he's still got it and who he is as a person, as a player. And I'd say this year he just feels much more calm and settled a little bit just from, you know, having played football recently rather than it had been, you know, a year plus. And his energy and just being around him, uh, you guys see him, the way he works at practice, you know, the speed, and that's always great. But he's, as a person, it's just been kind of fun to be around him, and he's – Got a great attitude every day, and I think that's kind of the guy we knew we were getting. You guys have just raved about uh, your mentality and, and the way that you've in installed things. It, it, is there meaning in, in them feeling that way about you? Yeah, it's always a, a great feeling when you have a group of men that, that understand what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. You know, for me, being in front of them, I'm being my authentic self. You know, I'm being who I am as a person on a daily basis. Um, I try to hold them to a standard and have a sense of urgency about getting things done. You know, we talk about from a team perspective about discipline and accountability. And, you know, every day I go about my job, it's not only for me to be disciplined and accountable, uh, our position coaches, but the players as well. On top of that, Rashad Weaver yesterday said that after talking to you and being coached by you, sometimes you make him want to just like run through a wall. When you hear that excitement, how, how much have you seen your mentality and your aggressiveness transition on the field with these players? You see it. It's, it like I said before, it's all about mindset. And it's about the mindset and what you preach on a daily basis. But on the flip side, these guys make me want to walk, run through a wall, too. Um, they're in, energetic. Man, they come in here every day wanting to work, want to get better. They smart, they're very smart. They grasp a lot of information on a short amount of time. So it's, it's, a, it's give and take, you know. They want to run through a wall for me, and I'll do the same thing for them. What's it like to see your vision come to life for this defense and how these players specifically can thrive in, in your system? Yeah, right now it's still, you know, it's still baby steps right now, and it's still early in the process. Um, we haven't even hit anybody yet. Right. You know, so right now, you know, this is we, we're lining up, we're getting getting our feet in the ground. We're looking at our keys. We're trying to do everything from a technical standpoint. But come summertime, when we come back to camp, that's when you really start to see it come to life, because now the guys got pads on and you'll see who will rise to the crop and see who, who doesn't rise to the crop, because 
when pads and a helmet come on, people change. And that's what I'm looking for. And I can't wait to this summer to see the guys that's going to rise and see the guys that, that struggle a little bit. You kind of heard one player after another talk about aggressive, aggressive mm -hmm. in terms of your philosophy. How do you, how do you think, quantify that maybe in a even year? How, how would the average Joe expect things to be different <coughs> when it's going to be more aggressive? Well, like I say, aggressiveness doesn't have to be sending more people. It's the mindset in which you play. Aggressiveness is if I'm on a line of scrimmage, I'm knocking guys back. I'm setting edges violently. I'm building a wall up front with the D linemen. It's aggressiveness is your linebackers reading your keys and coming downhill. And when they come downhill, you know, they're coming down with the intentions to run through people and knock uh, running backs backwards. Aggressiveness is running from sideline to sideline and swarming the ball and defending every blade of grass. And then when you have that attitude and you play that way, and then when you add smart pressures or smart decisions, now you start to become more multiple. But to me, aggressiveness is a mindset. It's, it's the way you go about your life on a daily basis. It's like this. Guys that are aggressive, you know, they normally don't fear failure. And, you know, I learned this a long time ago. It's, it's false evidence appearing real. So if, if, if I don't fear failure and I can line up and play and read my keys and look at the right thing, I'm going to be aggressive in what I do. And it's actually, we see that with the, the corners, you know, they're on the line of scrimmage and creating that chatter. And how intentional is that for you to have those guys? Oh, it's very intentional for me. Um, for me, I believe press or less. Like, I want them to line up and I want them to be in front of receivers and challenge, challenge the receivers. Ultimately, in this game, if you get free access, it's easy for this quarterback, the quarterbacks to complete balls. So what I do is I want to I want to uh, create hesitation at the line of scrimmage and make them earn it the hard way. Make them make them earn it. Throw the 50 50 ball. But everything else we're going to challenge. Now, how do you approach that? Do you leave it open to them to do it or it's from, day, you, from, you them? from day from day one? It's we press everything. When, when guys play off, when they have permission to play off, is it a matter of fear of getting beat over no, the top generally? No, sometimes now, now, listen, offenses, they do a great job of um, giving you different formations, right? So a lot of offense, when they spread you out and there's, there's wide, I mean, you want to line up and press them. You want to put body on the body. But what offenses do, they shrink the formation to get you to, to back off. So a lot of times, you know, when you see guys playing off coverage, it might be because of the coverage that you play in and you have zone vision, so you have to be off. Um, to me, it's not about, it's not about the DBs or the or players having, having fear to do it. It's about what do you emphasize, and players do what you emphasize. It's what you want from a scheme standpoint, and then teaching the techniques and letting the corners understand the leverage and where is their help. And when they thoroughly understand where the help is, they can play to certain leverages and take certain routes away. Sounds like you're not going to be playing a lot of that zone that requires you to be backed off. I guess we got to wait and see. What did you know about Caleb Farley from afar and, and now you've been around for a little bit? What have you made your thoughts to him? What's your message to him as, as some other guys have come in at that position? Well, look, Caleb, I remember when Caleb came out, coming out of Virginia Tech, um, I can't remember what organization that was. I've been in a couple of organizations of late. Um, but Caleb coming out, he had all the talent in the world. And it, it was a pretty good draft class. Um, with him, you, you, the length, he had the speed, the physicality. Um, he's, he's, he's a very smart player. Like being here, you know, Caleb kind of puts a smile on my face every day that I walk, walk in that room because he's had to fight through adversity and he's never wavered. And even to the day when he comes out, he attacks the day with purpose. And for me, it's just like to see a guy to go through some of the things that he's gone through and still standing as a young man and still trying to um, chase his dream and be the best version of himself, I love it. He's a smart player. Um, he picks up what you're asking him to do. If he makes a mistake, it's because he doesn't know, right? And then he corrects it and fixes it. So it's been an honor just to be around him amongst all the other players that we have. What do you feel like this team's strengths are the edge rusher position? And just what do you guys need to do to kind of unlock the best of what Harold can do, Arden can do, all those guys? Well, we just need them to be, be the best versions of themselves, right? Like, they've been productive, you know, their whole career. Uh, obviously, they have to be smart. Okay, we have to, you know, watch the ball. We can't can't get uh, uh, bad penalties because we're trying to pass rush. But they have the tools to go get it. Now it's about them just like playing free. Okay, doing their job, lining up where they're supposed to be, executing assignment, and just playing free. 
All right, and don't be afraid to make mistakes because if you if you keep training and you know how it is, iron sharpens iron. You keep doing the same thing and you do it the right way, the right way. When it's time to play in those games, right, you're going to be perfect at it. So for me, it's them being the best versions of themselves. It's them going out there, understanding the techniques and understanding works work, what works well for them, right? It's not having five moves. It might be one or two that you use that that you need to rush. And I think if they hone into what they do well, you'll get good results. What do you see from your safety group beyond Amani, who obviously has a wealth of experience? What do you see from some, some of these other guys? I see a bunch of guys developing, right? Um, it's nuances to the position. It's certain things that I want out of each call. So I see every day that these young men come out there, and, and you know, it's a lot of different things that we're doing. I see them getting better every day. And like I said, it's right now, and it's everybody's understanding their, their assignments, doing their jobs. When the pads come on, we'll see who's going to separate themselves when training camp come. But they're doing an excellent job. Rashawn mentioned how he feels like this defense is going to dictate more to the offense. What are the keys to be able to dictate the flow, regardless of what the offense is trying to do, make them work the way that you're wanting them to work instead of being reactive? Yeah, offense makes checks and they make certain things when they get to the line of scrimmage. You know, depending on what defense you're in, we'll have the ability to do the same. Pads aren't on yet, but did you like what you saw yesterday from the defense going up against the offense? And what are you trying to look for these next couple days in the game? Yeah, y'all were in there. You saw the energy. You felt the energy, the competitive nature. Um, that's what I like. We got a bunch of guys in this in this building, offense and defense, that just love football. And then what you see is as you get around them, they love being around each other. And then the coaches love being around each other. And the coaches love competing as well. So it's just, man, the energy – Guys trying to do it right, you know, doing it at a certain tempo that's also to help develop both sides of the ball but not hurt each other. So they, they know how to practice their pros. They've been doing an excellent job. And um, every day I'm around them, like I told you, they bring excitement to, to me as much as I do to them. What did you learn with the coach, <coughs> coach Accelerator program at the owners' meetings and what do you maybe hope they learn from you there? Well, you learn a lot. First of all, they, I, I just thank the organization for sending me there. You know, um, I learned this as a young man. No one's better than that opportunity. And uh, organization sent me there. I'm happy. I'm happy as I don't know what. Um, just going there, I mean, they set up um, seminars uh, for you to kind of learn going through the process of a head coach, right? Um, when things happen, how do you respond? Um, building a roster, you know, doing all the things that, that, that you need to be prepared for that next step. I think the NFL does an outstanding job of that. They had mock interviews, like uh, it was a panel of people that you had to go in there and you had to answer questions about how would you go about your program, what would you do, your philosophy, things like that, and then just being around the owners. Like one thing I give credit to the owners because the owners wanted to be there. Like that was the exciting part. They wanted to meet us. And just sitting at a table, you know, I'm sitting at a table with human beings I've never met before, and they're asking me questions from football questions to life. And we were having just regular dialogue. So it, it kind of like, you know, you put yourself on their level as well as they're trying to put their sales on your level, and now you're open and, and honest about conversations. And then, you know, being on as many teams as I've been on, I've seen a lot of uh, former owners and personnel people that I had great relationships with. Because one of my things is this, like no matter what team you're on, you try to leave the, the building where people around the building respect you and they're honest about what you do as a person on and off the field. So when other teams communicate, you know, they already interviewed you by the way that you, you act and you conduct yourselves in those buildings. So let's talk about the, the interior of the, the offensive line and how important that is for him in terms of protection. I wonder from the flip side of things, for you, how important is the priority to get pressure in the middle of that pocket? Well, you know, I think you know, we talk a lot about DBs, but the game is what won and lost in the trenches. And the biggest thing is, is like we talk about edge rush. You really want to dominate the, the offensive line through the A and B gaps. Because when you dominate the offensive line through the A and B gaps, there's no step up lane for the quarterback. And if no step up lanes, and if we go back to the corners being connected at the top of the route with no step up lane, where is it for the quarterback to throw? Gabe Judy Lawley done well to make an early impression. Who's that now? Gabe Judy Lawley. Oh, he's done. He's done an outstanding job. Like he's taking advantage of his reps. You know, you'll see him out in seven or seven. He's competing. Um, you know, he's doing a great job. And and when plays are there for him to make, 
you know, he, he's there and he's making them. You know, the ball found energy and he brings energy every day. How concerning is it to you when you install a new team and the fact that you don't have it out there? I'm not concerned. Uh, he's, he's done it over and over again, and right? And it's a production business. Have you seen him produce? He's going to produce here, all right? He's a smart guy. The thing what they did in Kansas City, and I don't, you know, I don't want to talk about other teams, but Spags runs multiple things too, right? And it's it's some similarities in in certain things across across the NFL. So the big thing with him is is what he did in Kansas City and how he's putting it in our terminology. So when he goes out there, it's some likeness, it's some same as, same as philosophy, and he can he can pick it up and execute. But right now, it's about him being healthy. It's about him uh, being ready to go. You know, in the first game when we line up and it's time to compete.